Hi, this is Arthur Carmazzi, best-selling author and currently ranked as one of the world's top 10 thought leaders in organizational culture and leadership. And welcome to the Knights of Transformation. Today we are going to be looking at part five of the Gamification of Organizational Culture series, part five of eight. And today specifically, we're looking at game mechanics okay so how do we actually gamify the, uh, the what are the mechanisms that we use to gamify all of the stuff that we've been talking about in parts one through four okay so everything is basically connected let's just kind of go through some of the stuff that we looked at in part one two three and four okay so first of all of course we talked about the objectives the game objectives so the game objectives essentially um, are what you're trying to achieve you're trying to achieve more cooperation better customer service better leadership um, cross-departmental uh, uh, cooperation whatever you know all the different things that you're trying to achieve okay so all of that is uh, the first step and then of course that is connected to behaviors what behaviors will help you to actually achieve those objectives and then of course we looked at the different emotional drives that support supported the behaviors and then we looked at themes okay remember themes make everything kind of fun and it kind of interweaves into all the different elements and finally today we are now looking at the mechanism the overall structure of how to do this now of course mechanism is only the main structure later on we're going to be looking at the different elements like partners and um, well the resources or the elements of the gamification the rewards and of course finally the feedback which is really the most important one because it also deals with performance measurement and management at the same time which is super cool because you get like this whole in all in one type thing by gamifying work behaviors okay so let's look at uh, gamification okay, must basically be connected to the emotional drive. You have to gamify emotional drives. So all of the things that you put together must be to get specific types of emotional gratifications. Okay, why? Well, because those emotional gratifications are essentially the motivators, right? They actually make you want to do these things. And of course, you add the theme element in there and it makes it fun. At the same time, you're getting all these different potential anticipation. And if you remember on, uh, if well, if you also watch the series on Where's Your Brain, you do realize that dopamine, for example, is one of the neurotransmitters that determines the anticipation of getting something. It's not the actual getting something. Dopamine is not the happiness. It is the anticipation of getting something or of achieving some level of happiness. Okay, so, okay, let's look at what these different emotional drivers are and what are some of the essentially um, mechanics or mechanisms that we can use in order to put them together. So for example, we have the emotional drive of challenge and growth. And challenge and growth, we have things like quests, uh, challenges, go figure, okay? And of course, things that relate to learning and learning activities. Activities. Okay, so you can have, say, for example, a quest that connects to the emotional drive of challenge and growth. Why? Because people must actually, you know, well, challenge themselves and learn things in the process and kind of, you know, deal with stuff that maybe they're not quite used to. Okay, then of course, recognition. For recognition, you've got things like competition, combat. Now, combat and competition are not necessarily the same kind of thing, okay, because, you know, competition can be anything. Combat is very specific on, like, um, you know, two people or two teams combating against each other, um, while competition can be uh, various things, including benchmarking against yourself. Okay? And, of course, in recognition, we also, of course, must have measurement. And, of course, love and belonging. Okay, so with belonging, there are things like team identity and, of course, cooperation and 
taking turns so that you get people that are working together but they're taking turns to do stuff and supporting each other in those turns okay the emotional drive for diversity and change you get things like chance for example rolling the dice is something that kind of gives you diversity because you don't really know what's going to happen okay and then boss fights i mean this is a a element where you're instead of people in the departments trying to argue and stuff like that, the bosses would actually get together and have some kind of a boss fight, not a um, verbal one that becomes annoying and not fun, but something where maybe they put on some uh, kendu bogu and uh, you know hit at each other with sticks, okay, to make it kind of fun so that everybody can see and see well who gets points enough to get their way and makes it a little bit fun, something very diverse that you don't see every day, okay? And at the same time, of course, it kind of lets people let go of steam, okay? And of course, things like story, things that, uh, you know, like what's happening. So creating a story as you go along that makes it creative, makes it unique, makes it, well, basically diverse and fun. So these are some of the mechanisms that can be used to gamify a work process. So we're going to have an example. Let's say today we're going to have the objective of being better or developing leadership in the people around us. So what are some of the things we need? Well, we have identified behaviors such as communication, active trust, and being performance focused. All right, then of course the emotional drivers for that, okay, we have identified as belonging, challenge and growth, and essentially recognition. Why recognition you say? Well, remember, okay, recognition is not bad, okay? Anybody that is, that wants to do something outstanding, that person usually has recognition. If they're satisfied with doing the stuff at the status quo, the recognition element is not that strong. Okay, but if you really want to be recognized, well, the only way to really do that is by being outstanding in a positive way, of course. Um, and there are people that will do that in negative ways to get recognition, but we're not going to talk about that here because we're talking about having fun and gamifying behavior. So let's look at some of the mechanics that we can use for that. So let's say, for example, and I made these little color coded things, so, you know, like um, green is communication, active trust is uh, blue, and uh, performance focused is red. So the, the words that have these different colors are kind of related to these original behaviors. Okay, so the mechanics, so you want to have a team identity, you want to connect the teams like, oh, we're, you know, this particular type of team. So they give themselves names and so on. Okay, cooperation, okay, you want the team to cooperate within each other and also to cooperate outside of the team. Okay, and of course, competition. So you want to create that sense of competition. Well, are you competing though within the members of the team or are you competing against other teams? Are you competing against yourself? Well, let's find out. Okay, and then of course, quests. We're going to work with quests in this particular case to have a specific outcome that is not part of your job description, but definitely support that job and of course all of this stuff is connected to the theme so let's kind of look at that in more detail all right so let's look at team identity in this case teams would take on a name such as for example the hero makers and a mission statement like finding unsung heroes throughout the organization okay and let's connect that to the quest okay and this is all of course we're assuming that the theme might be superheroes right and the, uh, the quest would be that teams must find the unsung heroes within the organization and promote them. Now, this basically means that they might look for that secretary that doesn't really say much, but she's behind the scenes and she gets all this stuff done and, you know, and makes life easier for everybody. Or it could be the janitor that's always whistling and kind of, you know, humming some nice things and he's always smiling and he's always greeting people. And, you know, he just makes life more fun to just kind of be around and just more interesting. Or it could be, you know, um, that lady uh, that uh, serves tea, okay? That is just, she's really a great listener. 
And um, it could be the manager who will always find the time to help somebody from a different department if they need it. Okay, so all of these are the purpose of the quest to find these people on a regular basis and of course promote them and of course we're going to put some cooperation in that because well of course okay teams must okay work across departments to achieve quest objectives and on top of that um, if we're going to put competition which is the next one Okay, we can't have teams just competing against each other. We still have to have them cooperate. So you've got teams maybe competing against other teams, but in order to actually win, the teams must cooperate. So there's this kind of like thing, well, we want to win, but we also have to cooperate. So that creates this kind of need to communicate and connect and build each other so that everybody has the potential to win and essentially make things happen for the quest, which essentially is kind of the goal of leadership, to develop the motivated individuals that are trying to make life better um, for everybody and develop leaders within the organization itself. Okay, why does that help? Well, because if we're, you know, using this quest, we're also identifying the characteristics that we want to promote within people around the organization. And of course, everybody wants to be recognized in some way, you know, um, through this quest. And we got people that are doing this in different teams, not only being recognized, but also um, recognizing others in the process. Okay, so by creating this fundamental structure, now we are ready to go. Now remember, this is only the main structure. We're not talking about all the little elements because all of that stuff still comes in the next levels. Okay, so this is the main, main structure. So everything else, when it comes to uh, connecting the resource elements or essentially uh, the rewards, okay, when it comes to uh, expanding the game players, um, you know, through partners and of course through feedback, which is essentially the measurement element which we discussed is the most important factor because it connects everything. Measurement lets you see how you're doing, how other people are doing, how you're doing against yourself, how you're doing against others. All of these different things is part of the measurement process and of course that is going to make the big difference. But for the next video, okay, we're going to be talking about the resource elements or the reward system. How do you connect rewards into this system? And it's, rewards is not always some tangible thing, remember? Okay, so how do you re incorporate rewards um, and resources into the mechanism? And that is in the next one. But before you go, okay, if you're interested in gamification, we are having a gamification certification and internationally accredited because it uses the directive communication psychology gamification certification um, and if you want to find out more just go to www.gamification.coach okay that's www.gamification.coach to find out more and this is Arthur Carmazzi wishing you great success